Hi everyone, welcome to another Tech Nerd tutorial. Today we are going to install OnlyOffice, a document management, project management, customer relationship management system that is a small to large business replacement for Google Apps or Microsoft Office products. OnlyOffice Formerly Team Lab Office is an all-in-one suite which includes document management and an online editing platform, a customer relations management system to help do invoices as well as keep track of your customers, project management where you can do things like time tracking, task management, and milestones within those projects and provide Gantt charts, and then a mail aggregation which you can use to have all your mail centrally located in only Office, just like Outlook or you can be able to send out your invoices through this as well. So a lot of different features in there. There is some additional information and of course the contact information at the bottom. The left column has the prefer hosting on your server option, which allows you to install only Office on your own system. It does talk about the free version of only Office, and this particular version does have a few less features than the enterprise version. You can see that it doesn't have things like data backup, mail merge, some of the more office enterprise type materials, but many things like the project management and the mail is all completely still in this particular version. You can go ahead and click get only office free edition. This will take you to a page where if your server is set up, you can put your IP address and a user and login for only office to be able to just one click install onto that particular server. I did try this out, but I found that firewalls really do get in the way of this particular system. And you may not be as comfortable letting some external source be able to do whatever they want on your computer, even temporarily. There are quite a bit of requirements. The six gigabytes of memory is really important, as well as the two cores of processing power. I did find that it didn't work well if you didn't have all those requirements. Furthermore, if you want to do an alternative, there is instructions on GitHub in order to install this manually using Docker. So where we're actually gonna go is we're gonna close this tab and we are going to go, instead of onlyoffice.com, we're gonna to go to onlyoffice.org. This is where we can get the free edition of our server and it'll give us instructions to use Docker as the means of deploying the only office environment. So Docker is a system which allows us to download containers and have the system compartmentalized in these particular containers so that the software and its dependencies are all together. I'm just scrolling up so we can see the requirements. It's the same requirements where it's four gigabytes of RAM, two dual core processors. It does say two gigabytes of swap file, but together it could just be six gigabytes of RAM at least two gigabytes of space, although really 40 gigabytes if you want to actually store file and then Docker, which is what we're going to install now. So here we're just gonna open a new tab and we can search for Docker install Ubuntu or install Docker Ubuntu, all that. And then the first result on Google will give us our instructions. So installation on Ubuntu Docker Docs. From here, we can see that we're currently using Ubuntu Trusty 14.04. So if we scroll down to the prerequisites, it's gonna show us some minimum kernels, some minimum versions, things that we don't really need to worry about since we're running Trusty. Uh, Trusty, there is no prerequisites at all. So we can just keep scrolling down until we get to the installation section. And at that installation section, the first thing we wanna test is if we have wget. It's just an application to be able to pull from the command line from the internet and download a file. So for us to do that, we can just go ahead and type which wget. As long as we get the user bin wget, we know that it's installed. Then we can skip the next couple, which would install wget. So we don't need to worry about those. We can just go to step three. We can just highlight what's in the code all the way up to the w go ahead and copy, and then we go back into the terminal and paste that in. What this does is it just downloads from Docker a script to say what needs to be installed. We go ahead, put in our password, it's gonna download, it's gonna do the install. So it just updates and then installs the needed packages and we're good to go. From there, we 
To now restart our computer, I found that this was needed for the desktop version, but not the server version. So if you're using Ubuntu desktop, go ahead and restart. And if not, if you're using the server version, you can just keep going to the next step. So here we're back. I've scrolled down to the installing open only office community server with the document and mail servers. So we can just copy that first line of code and paste it in. Then we go ahead, hit enter. It's gonna ask for our password. We're gonna go ahead, give it. Then it's gonna go ahead and download all the necessary files. Once those files are downloaded, then we can move on to the next step. Now that those files are downloaded, all we have to do is wash, rinse, and repeat with the other two servers. So we can then go back to the web page and then scroll down a little bit to the only Office mail server. So we'll go ahead and highlight all that. We're gonna go ahead and copy that and then go ahead back into terminal and paste that in. One thing to note about this particular uh, line is that we do need to change the host. So you see that I'm just scrolling to where it says yourdomain.com. You want to put your own domain. If you don't have one, you could technically use a third party like I am right now. It does give a little bit of a quirk, but I'll put a link to uh, that particular uh, tutorial anyways. And then later on, just note for what you'd have to do in order to get this to work properly. But if you have your own personal domain or if you're just using it locally, you don't need to worry about that at all. So once again, we're going to go ahead and hit enter. It's going to go ahead and install. And once it's done installing, then we can just go on and install the last Docker container into our Ubuntu server. So this last one, all we have to do is just copy and paste the entire bit of text and to terminal, and then that will just install the very last component. This is the largest component. This will be the actual only office environment. So we'll go ahead, paste that. It will link to the mail and document server. And then once again, it will go ahead and pull all the necessary files and then install that accordingly. So now that all that is installed, we can now go ahead and open up a new tab and then go to our only office web address. So once again, if you don't have one, then you can follow our no IP installation. And if not, just use your own. It will go to the root location. So we're going to go ahead and go there. It's going to first initialize. This will happen every single time you restart the computer, just because of the fact that the development framework mono needs to actually build the framework. Once it is done initializing, the first page will give us a place to put a password as well as an email address for our administration account. So once we put all that information in, it's going to go ahead and send us a confirmation email as well as take us to the only office environment. The home page first has as a big icon the documents. One thing to note is that although we're logged in, if we don't actually confirm that email confirmation, we will have some limited functionality. Regardless, if I scroll down a little bit, we can see the projects, content resource management, mail server, uh, people for contacts, and then a community where you can also have news announcements and a blog and a wiki all set up in that area as well. If I go ahead and click on documents, it's going to take us to our document manager. And at that document manager, uh, it will be able to upload and download files. But the important thing to note is that I first get this yellow banner saying that in order for me to get all the access to all the features, I need to first activate my email. So I'm going to go ahead and open a new tab and go to my email. You'll see that I have the only office email, which I've just clicked and I get to a server not found. The reason is because there is no period after the tech nerd services if I'm using a third party domain. So I do have to put that in manually and then hit enter and then everything will work fine. This is generally why I suggest that if you have your own personal domain, use that instead because you don't want to have situations where your users are confused on how to even register for your particular only office environment. So either purchase a, a domain or just choose to use it locally in an internal network where that doesn't matter. And then once they're uh, domain is set up, then you can just use it without having to worry about them having to receive emails. Those are kind of the two options that you have. So here now I'm at my login screen and I can go ahead and log in and then it will take me back to my home page and I can go ahead and go back to the documents to get to the document manager where I was just before. 
before I move on, I also am just going to go ahead and close some of the tabs at the very top. Uh, you will also see that there was no yellow border anymore, so we're good to go. And I can even go ahead and now click on a file and open it, and it's going to go ahead and open in the online editor. The online editor in Linux is pretty new, so it does take a little bit to load, but it is quite fully functional. You'll see all the different menus at the top. I can go ahead and edit this Word document directly in this web interface. Go ahead and highlight text and start writing new text and be able to edit this document right from any web browser that I can log on to only Office with. I can also choose to create documents. So there's document spreadsheet and PowerPoint presentation as well as folders. And just like with Google Docs, these things save automatically, and I can also add accounts like Box and OwnCloud. Now, strangely enough, I thought that uh, the, it says that you can also add Google Drive and Microsoft OneDrive. I couldn't quite find that for this server, so it might just be for enterprise. I'm not quite sure. If I go back to the home and to the projects, we can now also see what the project manager does. It does tasks, milestones. You can link documents, have discussion boards, and pull out ports for all these projects. So it really is very feature rich. I can go ahead and start a new project. And then from there, it will ask me to first go ahead and create a name for this project, put a description for this project, and then also give uh, any additional information like tags and the project manager. I went again and forgot to add a project manager. So I'm just going to go ahead and add myself and hit save. And then now here I have a project which I can now do things like add tasks, add milestones, you can do a Gantt chart with this, create reports all from this project. Then there is a, a customer relations manager. So this is really useful in order to manage contacts, to be able to track our sales and also to create invoices, which I think is extremely useful. Now, the only real downside with the CRM is there really isn't a exclusively financial aspect. You can link sales to contacts there isn't really a place to really deal with accounts. So with that, uh, that's kind of the only real lacking thing, but the greatest thing here is to be able to create invoices. There is just a couple more things that I want to show, but I am going to switch to a Windows 7 environment. Uh, first thing to show that even though everything was set up on an Ubuntu desktop, or you could set up an Ubuntu server, we can still access our uh, only office environment from any computer connected to the internet. So here I'm in Windows 7 in Chrome, and I've just typed in our web address. And we're just going to wait for it to load. And then after that, we will be able to go ahead and log in and still do everything that we did show in the Ubuntu environment. So here I'm just going to put in my login information and my password. And I'm going to be able to get to the home page once again, and then be able to go to the documents and be able to manage my files. The other thing that I didn't show in Ubuntu, but I want to show here is the ability to create a document. So here I've just hit create. It's going to ask us to go ahead and name our file. So I'm just going to leave it as new document. And then it's going to open up in the online editor. Once the online editor finishes loading, then I could go ahead and be able to uh, type some words into this particular document. And the one thing that I want to draw your attention to is that there isn't a need to save as long as I'm connected to the internet. This will automatically save whenever I stop typing. And that just makes it a lot easier so that I don't have to worry about losing my work part way through. This is also kind of why only Office does need more resources because it does do more of the heavy lifting of some of these processes in the background. So here's the save button. It is grayed out, but if you're typing, you will notice that it does turn dark to be clickable. But once you've finished typing, it does usually gray out just because it is done. So I didn't have to hit any save button. I just went ahead and went back to the documents, uh, the document manager. And once this finishes loading, we see that there is a new document file. And if I go ahead and click that particular file, it is going to take me back to the online document editor. There we will see the text that I did write in the document is all still there, even without saving. So that, in a nutshell, is only Office. Hi everyone, thanks again for watching this video. Please don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And go ahead and leave a comment down below if you have any additional questions or comments. Furthermore, check out some of our related videos or find us in our social media. 
If you would like email notifications of whenever we release new video or written tutorials, you can go to our webpage technerdservices.com and sign up for our weekly newsletter. We will send to your inbox notifications of those new video and tutorials. Thanks again for watching and until next time, keep teching on.